Hey guys, it's Dave and welcome to the Weird Kid Show. It's awesome having you here today. So it started with the New Year's uh, special, uh, this bottle, the Monster Bottle, okay, and uh, didn't get it done. I was drinking that night, New Year's Eve, you know, I was letting my hair down. So I decided to pick back up on this thing once I had a clear head. And that was a result of last week's video. So part one of this video is down in the description. Okay, if you haven't watched, if you might want to watch that first, if, if uh, before you watch this. Um, so yeah, I just took uh, polymer clay, coated the whole thing, uh, baked it, and then uh, after it was cured, I went ahead and sculpted on it. Okay, so now the sculpt is done. It's where I want it to be. But now is where the magic happens. This is where we can make this thing come alive, and that's the painting, and that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, the awesome thing is with this project is you could do literally probably a thousand bottles and not do the, do one the same. The the possibilities are are endless with this project. You could get as big or as elaborate or as simplified as you want but you can just go crazy and the great news is that it's relatively cheap you can find bottles just about anywhere if you find a bottle and don't have a cork they sell bags of corks at uh, I think I saw them at Hobby Lobby and uh, Michael's you know just buy a bag of, of corks and uh, of course that helps uh, I still have to glue this thing in here uh, but you can see this bottle came with the cork and you know, I just did an indentation in it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to epoxy that cork into the top of this here, and then it's going to, you know, you can position it however you want. Um, I like him, he's whimsical. I've always been a fan of the whimsical, you know, with the uh, distorted features and whatnot. Okay, so we're going to paint this thing. Uh, what what I use uh, is acrylics, and I have a, a, a I tend to have a lot of Apple Barrel uh, products, which you can find them at Walmart, pretty cheap at Walmart. Um, and of course, you're gonna need paint brushes of all various shapes and sizes, and I like to have a really fine point uh, brushes for the fine detail and all the way up to like chip brushes for covering uh, and then of course uh, I got a cup of water to rinse my brushes and like toilet paper or a paper towel whatever you need to wipe your brush after you uh, this is something else that I get that are cheaper a buck at the dollar store uh, load up on them but if it starts getting manky like this don't throw it away because if you're painting with acrylic paint all you have to do is chip out a little bit and this stuff peels out just like rubber all right, so you can you could bring this thing back to its original white just by peeling off the. But me, I leave it. It's seasoned. Let's call it that. Okay, so we could go crazy. We could do all kinds of different colors on this thing. But I keep thinking about just a green, uh, a green, uh, the traditional alien monster green. Uh, with some highlights and stuff like that and then maybe we'll try to incorporate some colors into it so I'm gonna start for a base I'm gonna start with uh, this now this is a folk art one here this is evergreen uh, and uh, actually this is an enamel all right so this might take a little bit longer to dry uh, I'm gonna put a lot on there because I'm gonna go ahead and coat this thing good. I'm going to use my chip brush to start just to cover a lot of ground. Um, now I'm going to have to be careful when I start getting around them acrylic teeth because uh, especially that uh, the the canines that I made are uh, Primo polymer clay which is a sculpted product. Uh, I found that when you get little dabs of paint on there, it's kind of it's kind of takes some work to get it off. Uh, I might try alcohol or something like that, but uh, I'm not sure about the the human acrylic teeth because I've never 
uh, done that before. Now I'm not going to be worried about getting any on that eye. It's glass and that paint will scrape off super easy at the end. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going with this dark green base because that's going to, first of all, it's going gonna, it's gonna to serve as a primer for us. And then um, it's also going to serve as our shadows, okay, in those recessed areas so that we can start going from dark in the recessed areas that don't see much of the light and then start to uh, fade it into um, highlights, which would be the raised areas. Um, take that off. So yeah, this is a fun one. I enjoy these. I've done, I've actually done quite a few of these, but yeah, it's not been until recently that, uh, you know, uh, somebody had commented on a bottle. In fact, I keep meaning to bring that in to show you guys uh, that one there. Uh, I'm not, that one there is not, I can, I know I can do better. Um, that was the first one I had done in a while. So it, uh, it's not perfect anyways, but uh, it doesn't have to be, you know. Uh, with these, I keep thinking maybe, possibly, of doing a cabinet. A monster cabinet, if you will. So just imagine, you know, maybe it could be a uh, whimsical along the line. Harry Potter, for some reason, keeps coming to mind. Where, uh, you know, when they go into the, the shops. I'm not a huge... You'll have to forgive me. I didn't read the books. And <clears throat> I've only seen the movies, like, spotty at best. I've never sat down and watched from start to finish a Harry Potter movie. And so I can't tell you who's who. I mean, I know some of the characters. But um, but anyways, so the stores where they have all kinds of crazy, magical, whimsical things in there, you know. And... Um, I, I imagine a cabinet that's the cabinet itself has character with carved uh, filigree like and uh, maybe it's say like monsters and then maybe some kind of a, a fictitious um, like Rasputin's cabinet of of horrors or something who knows but anyways inside this cabinet are all these different bottles which are potions and what, what you turn to, you know whatever the the character is on the bottle itself is is uh oh we just lost the tooth I, I was expecting that to happen that might happen uh because I didn't use bacon bond for one which still might not have held it but um I, I expected that to possibly happen, so you might want to check them before you get too heavy into this, because now I'm going to need to take some super glue or epoxy will work too, and, and reset it in there, and I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of these teeth. Uh, so I'm just going to let you guys uh, chill out, uh, digest this a little bit. I'm going to check these teeth, fix it, and finish putting the base coat on this thing, and we'll come back, and then we'll start getting into the, uh, the details, so hang tight. Welcome back, guys. So, yeah, I went ahead and took that uh, evergreen and just completely coated the whole thing. And, you know, I had to use a smaller brush to get in around the teeth, in between the teeth and, you know, inside the little crevices, which wasn't easy. And, of course, I had gotten little droplets here and there of paint on the teeth. So what I had to do in that case is uh, once this thing dried, then you can just take your little razor knife and just go in there and scrape that green off the teeth and you'll find it'll come right off. Uh, so now we got a clean set of teeth again and we have the green and all <coughs> the crevices. Now the eyeball is covered with paint, but that's okay because when we get done here, we're going to go in and it'll come right off, okay? <clears throat> so I got me some of that, oh, oh, the other thing I did too was 
I, uh, I glued the cork inside of his little, uh, whatever you want to call it, doodad, and uh, covered that with the beige paint. So, I've taken some of, I still got some of that green, I've added some white, I've got me a bigger brush. I'll take some of that white and mix it in there, make it a lighter shade of that green. <clears throat> I'm going to take paper towel, toilet paper, whatever you got, rag, and I'm going to get a bunch of that paint off there. I want to take the excess off, and then I'm going to go ahead and then just start to dry brush it. So, uh, so I got my brush here, and I'm just going to want to dust it. Barely wipe on it. <clears throat> now where you got uh, where you got wrinkles, you're not gonna really want to go that way and fill them in. To really make them pop, you're gonna want to go across them, not with them, but across them. All right. So this is our first, just our first dusting. Now already it it starts to make it pop a little bit and it starts to make it look more of something organic as opposed to uh, just a you know, solid color and on my lips I need to get some more paint here on my tongue but uh, yeah so it gives you an idea uh, this is the first cut and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start working and building up and I'm even going to add uh, a more of a fluorescent green on top of this so uh, let me coat this whole thing and then I'm going to come back and then you're going to have a look to see where we're at so hang tight guys alright guys so this is where we're at now this is what I did we, I went ahead and I dry brushed the whole thing that uh, lighter version of the green and I went ahead and cleaned up the eyes a little bit. Uh, he's starting to come together. So now it's just a matter of uh, what's going to work. What's going to look good. I don't know. But I did pull. I'm going to play around with uh, this one here is an Apple Barrel product. It's Lime Tree. And then I also took. This is called Princess Purple. All right, I want, I want to see if I can get a little contrast into them. And I might even go with a uh, King's Gold, like a darker yellow for little, maybe um, little spots or something. I don't know. See, that's the thing I don't know. Uh, I won't know until I start doing this thing. But the first thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and take some of this green. And I'm going to go ahead and dry brush some of that on there for you so we can see what it's going to look like together so I'm going to give me some of this let's see what we got here with this just dry brush that on there I'm going to take a good photo for you with some uh, good lighting stuff so you'll be able to see what he's, you know, what he's starting to look like. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to play with this and then uh, I might play around with that purple uh, and then I'm going to come back and uh, I'm going to see what we're going to do next. And So hang tight guys, thanks for sticking with me. <clears throat> 
All right, guys, I think we are done. I'm done, anyways. All right, so uh, I have one more step to do, and, and the last thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to take some uh, matte finish clear coat and spray it on there to protect it, okay, to seal it. All right, but what I did was, uh, after going over with that light green, I, uh, I took some of this that purple, the princess purple, and then I just kind of dry brushed like around the eyes a little bit underneath just to add hints of uh, you know and to give it some contrast those little warp things that I painted in purple around it and then I give it like some like a yellow uh, like maybe it was like it's a gross zit or something who knows and then you know and they did the same thing up here and so it's done and uh, if you think about it it's super easy too you know and uh you can work on you you could spend you know an hour just covering it with the clay and uh cook it and then put it aside and then at your leisure you can slowly work it that's the great thing about uh Scopey is that you don't have time constraints um uh, you could leave it uncured and just put it in a safe place and work on it uh at your leisure until you're you're satisfied with what you come up with uh, before you do the final bake and, and paint paint um, but uh, yeah that's what we've got now um, like I was saying before one of our other breaks there was um, yeah I was, I'm thinking about doing a series of these and then doing a monster cabinet that these all go in all right and each one has a property so if you drink this uh, you turn into some kind of a crazy alien or something or maybe, you know who knows um but uh if you're interested in seeing more of these more of this then down in the comments please let me know that you'd like to see uh more of these i can i can do these all day i love doing these so um anyways if you haven't done so already please like and subscribe and hit the bell it's going to inform you when i upload another video and there's there's i'm here to stay guys uh, we're here for the long haul youtube's a long game for me it's not uh, a passing phase this is I, I do this stuff anyways i figure i might as well share it with you um good or bad um but anyways yeah it, it, Check out my brothers, uh, the Trio of Terror, which is myself, Vic Springston from Monster Misfits, and uh, Keith from Cobwebs and Candlesticks. And come on over to uh, the Monster Misfits uh, Facebook group, say hi, and check us out on Monday nights uh, at uh, 7 o'clock for our live stream. Um, anyways, I appreciate you guys so much, and until next time, peace.